Hey guys, Kevin Muldoon here. What I'd like to do in this video is talk about battery life with your Surface Pro 4. This is something that's very important to a mobile device. This is a very light device and obviously when you get thinner devices, battery life is affected. Microsoft claim that you can get up to 9 hours of video playback. Now that is obviously very, very ambitious and it's unlikely anyone would get that in the real world. But battery life is a little bit better than what I did expect it to be. You know, some people were talking about the battery life being on this on this device being terrible. I've actually found it to be okay. Um, what I like to do is just kind of explain what you should be doing and how you can improve battery life and battery management. Now you can see the battery um, indicator down here. I've got seventy one percent, and it says two hours six minutes. Now that's pretty poor. You'll see this option here, battery saver. Now if you click that, now that's only changing it, that's not really changing anything just now. I don't know why, I've noticed that today. Sometimes the indicator kind of jumps quite a, a, a bit. It, can, you know, it shows you five hours, about just a few minutes ago it was saying that I had five, six hours left and now it's saying I've got two hours left. So I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know if it maybe just gets mixed up if, um, or it's maybe just predicting you're going to be using a lot of intensive programs. But if you use battery saver, it's really going to save you a lot of hassle. You can access a battery saver from a few places. One option is down here at the bottom. You're just down at the little power icon. The other option is down at the not notifications menu and you can just enable it and disable it. And you can see that when I turn, um, I'm not sure if that's showing in the cam in the screenshot, but when I turn on the battery saver, um, the brightness goes down and there's a lot of other things going on in the background to make sure that, you know, your battery life is going to be extended. You won't be getting as much power. I mean, I think that's one of the, the, the ways that it does that, you know, the way that it saves battery. There's a lot of other things you can do, though, um, to improve your battery life. First thing would be um, to watch the applications that you're using. So if you go into your task manager, if you see anything that's using a lot of CPU or anything that's using a lot of memory, then you might want to close them down if you're trying to preserve battery life. Or if you can, only use those programs when you're plugged in. What I've been reading about is that when you use tur Turbo Boost, you know it gives you increase the, the, the process. Yeah, can't even talk. It can increase this, the processor speed up quite a lot from say two gigahertz, was two point two in mine, up to say three point four or something like that. But when you do that, apparently. It draws, instead of drawing like 5 watts of power, it draws about 25 watts of power. And that's why the fans kick in. So you get all this extra power and all this extra resources given to you. But the downside to that is that you're going to use, you know, more power. requires more power, so you're going to use more of your battery life doing that. So if, for example, I had to put on Premiere Pro and I started editing a video, my battery life is going to get eaten up very, very quickly. So just be aware of that, that if you're going to use... A resource hungry program it's going to use up more power and if, especially again if, it, if turbo boost is activated you're going to start burning up your battery pretty quickly now there's a, a lot of other things you can do as well you can see i've got microsoft edge open here that is not the browser i normally use i usually uh, use google chrome apparently google chrome is a lot more resource intensive and that is what i've seen in the past as well it's really, really resource hungry. I love Google Chrome just because of the bookmarking and you know a lot of extensions that are available for it. But if you want to preserve battery life, you might want to use something like Microsoft Edge or a different browser that's perhaps a little bit resource um, uses a little bit less resources. Now, there's other things you can do as well. First thing would be if you're not using the internet, if you're not needing to be connected to the internet, then just disable Wi-Fi. Go down to your notifications and just turn Wi-Fi off and in theory that should increase battery life quite a bit. Another thing you can do as well is just good practice if you're not using something remove it. So if you've got something connected to your laptop you've got a, a, a USB microphone for example connected to your surface if you're not using it remove it. If you're not using a, mic, a, a USB hub or any, anything that's going to take power from your from your laptop. If you're not using it, just remove it. That's good practice to get into. The other thing would be, I mean, I, I said about avoiding Chrome, but you should, just, you should probably avoid using Flash as well. That's something else that does use up a lot more power and you, there are alternatives that you can use. Another good 
thing to watch is um, if you go into your settings menu, so this is the main settings menu, you go to system and then you go down to power. And when you go down to power, you'll see this option down here where it says when plugged in, stay connected to Wi Fi while asleep, or on battery power, stay connected to Wi Fi while asleep. So, what I recommend doing is if you're on battery power, don't stay connected to Wi Fi because you're going to use up a lot of battery. And unless you're uploading videos or doing anything that requires you to send data to the internet, then I would just disable that so that when your screen isn't on, then you know you're not going to be using Wi Fi, which means that you're not going to be using up battery life. And it's in, in the same ballpark as that as well. If you're not going to be actually using your laptop for a few seconds or a few minutes, sorry, if you're not going to be using your laptop for a few minutes, push the power button and just kind of you know, switch the screen off. It's, you know, I, I think it's the most practical way of saving battery, you know, because I mean? the screen is what's going to be using up your power a lot, so just disable it. Now, here's another thing you can do. You can generate a battery report. So, I want to do that. I'm going to, I've got, I took a screenshot so I remembered the actual um, commands for you to do that. All you have to do is Go to your command prompt, you can put you can type in CMD down the bottom and it'll bring it up. So I'll show you just now what you need to do. You need to just type in this. You type in power CFG forward slash battery report forward slash output. And you can put it anywhere, but C makes the most sense. And this one's a backslash, I believe. And then just name your report. Your report. So that should be right. You do not have the permissions. Ah, do you know why that's happened? Is because when I went to do the command prop, you need to run it as an administrator. Sorry about that. So you need to run this as an administrator and no, it's not. Let me put it back in. So I'll do that again. Power CFG battery report output and then C that should be correct. Right, so it's now saved a battery report. Now what we can do, exit that, go down to File Explorer, go to your C drive, and you'll see here, Battery Report. Open that up, and you can see a report. Now, this report shows you a lot of information. Um, you can see here it's got full design capacity, design capacity. It tells you a lot of information about your battery, about how much life, etc. it's got. And this shows you the power states over the last few three days, when I've been connected. You can see when I've been putting it into a suspension, when I've been uh, had the AC adapter plugged in. And you can see when I've been connecting it, disconnecting it, everything like that. It's quite a useful report. And down here you've got your battery usage and how many hours, etc. you were using it. So this will help you get an understanding of how long the battery life lasts on your on your surface. Now, I haven't been using it and then draining it down to like zero percent to test, you know, how long the battery life will last. I've, I tend to when it gets low, I'll charge it because sometimes I walk about and I don't have it connected. So if it gets down to like under a half, sometimes I'll just plug it in or down to under a third probably. Um, I'll try to see where, where the energy has been drained here. Thirty percent. So you can see the capacity, that, at that point it was down at 17%. And then after, what's that, after nearly an hour, it was up to 57%. It charged the capacity from 6,667 up to 22,000. And you can see here as well, um, you can see I was using it in night time. So it went from 84% down to 55%. And that was like an hour of usage. So that was quite heavy. I can't remember what I was doing there. But 
Again, this, this report is just something else that's going to give you an idea of how your battery life is with your Surface, how your battery is as far as the capacity goes, and it might point you in the right direction about how your life is with your particular battery. And you see a lot of information down here as well. This one, it was active for four hours, it was active for six hours. So my estimate is that if I've got battery like a saver on, if I've not got the volume up super high, I've not got anything, you know, intensive, I should be able to get six hours out of this, you know, browsing or perhaps even some video. I reckon I'll get five to six hours. A lot of people think that's disappointing because, you know, you can get iPads, for example, that have got 10 hours or 11 hours. For me, that's more than enough. You know, it's very rare that I'm going to have to use this for six hours without being close to a power outlet. But if you're someone who needs battery life, that could be a problem for you. For me, that's not a problem. In fact, I've come from a laptop, you know, where I, I never really used to get a lot of good battery life, so it's not something that concerns me majorly. But it's going to last on a long flight for me. I would never use it for six hours on a flight, but for me, I would probably get five or six hours on a flight. Your capacity may be different if you've got, a, you know, if you've been using it for a while. And it, again, it does depend on your usage, how you're using your Surface, how you're, you know, what apps you're using, whether you're activating the fan through Turbo, uh, the Turbo Boost, whether you're switching on battery saver, whether your brightness is on high or low, all these things matter. Just be proactive about it. And if you need to worry about battery life, if you're going, you know, if you're about the house, battery life probably won't be a major issue. But if you're traveling on a bus, on a train, or you're flying, think about what's draining the battery and your battery will last longer. And so just keep your battery life in mind. Keep the, you know, the resource hungry applications to a minimum. Turn the brightness down. Remove any USB ports you're not, uh, that you're not using. And I'm sure you're going to get, you know, good life out of this. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you found this useful. If you've got any tips or any advice about the battery life of your own uh, Surface Pro, you want to share tips with anyone, please do leave a comment below. And if you've got any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, if you enjoyed the, the video, please do consider subs subscribing to the channel or sharing the video or clicking like. Till next time guys, thanks for watching. You've been great, thanks.